So I've heard this uh, teaching that says all sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. Because they say, or the preacher says that every sin that a person commit after Jesus died is in the future. So you haven't even committed the sins yet, so they are forgiven when Jesus came here and died. But is that really true? Are all sins, past, present, and future forgiven? What about the sins I haven't committed yet? The preachers say they are forgiven. But let's go into the scriptures and let's see what does the scriptures say about sins being forgiven. Now, I want to start this teaching off in the book of Romans chapter 2. And I want to start at verse 14 because I want to show how all were under the law. Then I want to get into how the scriptures teaches how we are not under the law and what makes us sinners. So let's start off Romans chapter 2, starting at verse 14. It says this, For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law or a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness in their thoughts, the mean while accusing or excusing um, one another. So the scriptures talk about how the Gentiles did not have the law. And we know that the Jews were given the law. And God gave the Jews the Ten Commandments that would show the Jews what they should not do or what God commands was for them not to do. And so the Gentiles wasn't given their law. But he says, the scripture says that when they do by nature the things contained in the law, these have not the law or a law to themselves because the law was written in their hearts. And so their conscience also bear them witness. So, um, so now that would show that though the Gentiles were not given the law, the Gentiles were under the law because it was in their hearts and their conscience bear witness to that. And so now I want to go over to Galatians chapter 3 real quick. Galatians chapter 3, I want to start at verse 19. And scripture says this, Wherefore then serveth the law? So now why did the law come? What is the purpose of the law? He says, Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgressions. See, that's what we're talking about, sin, transgressions against the law. So... The scripture says it was added because of transgressions till the seed should come. So it was added until the seed should come, which is Jesus, to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily righteousness, should have been by the law. But the scripture had concluded all under sin that the promise of faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. So the law was given as a schoolmaster until Jesus should come. And now that Jesus came, we are no longer under the law. So this is the scripture that shows that we are not under the law. But guess what happens, though? If you commit sin, even though you're not under the law, guess what you do? Now, before I do that, let's go to Romans chapter 7. And let me show you. It says, verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law had dominion over man as long as he liveth. So the law have dominion over man as long as he lives. Alright? But now that Jesus came, remember, now that the faith has come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. Because when you go down to verse 4, Paul is going to explain, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law. Because it goes into how the wife is under 
the law to her husband as long as he lives. But if he be dead, she is loose from that law so that she is no longer an adulterer, though she be married to another man. So Paul used that analogy to teach about the law. So that's why he says, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also have become dead to the law. And dead how? That's by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So now that Jesus came, now that that faith has came, we are no longer under the law. And the law is what taught men their sins, taught men their transgressions. It showed men that they were doing what was unlawful to God. And so, but the thing is, now that we're not under the law, we're not under the law, but guess what happens whenever you sin? So when I go to Galatians chapter 2, as a matter of fact, let's go to 1 John first. Let's go to 1 John chapter 3, and I want to read verse 4. It says this, Whosoever committed sin transgress also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. So when, And so when we sin, we're showing that we transgress a law of God. For sin is a transgression of the law. But now that we are not under the law, then what happens after that point as it pertains to sin? Galatians chapter 2 is going to give that answer. Galatians chapter 2, I want to read verse 18. And the scripture says this. It says, verse starting verse 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin, God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So if you build again those things that you destroyed, now that Christ comes, you make yourself a transgressor. It says, for, for I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. So, now that Christ comes, you're not under the law. But if you sin, you make yourself a transgressor of the law. And, and now, what sins are forgiven, this answer is going to be proven right here in the book of Romans chapter 3. And then I'm going to end this video. Romans chapter 3, verse 25 says this. Well, I'm going to start at verse 23. It says, For all have seen and come short of the glory of God. All have seen and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So that's that, that faith come, that redemption is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation propitiation through faith in his blood to declare righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God so those sins that are past are forgiven once we come to Christ but if you sin as the scripture says in um, Galatians chapter 2 verse 18 you make if you build again that which you have destroyed you make yourself a transgression so ain't no past present future sins all forgiven for your lifetime. If you sin, you make yourself a transgression.